Let's start getting some data for our procedure analysis. So here I have defined the imports that I will need. Obviously, I will need to import the research study class and the asset class so that I can form the portfolio into a list like this one we can see down below. I have also defined here some variables that hold paths to then save the data frames that I generate or save the plots. Uh, remember that I use Linux, so you will need to change those paths based on your overall system and folder structure. Here is the asset list. As you can see, I have just defined each asset as its symbol string. You can see it here. Asset type string and data type string. I have created a varied portfolio with different traditional asset types like an uh, index from the US, a cryptocurrency, a major pair, a minor pair, and an index uh, from the European sound. And keep in mind that you can request other assets that you might find interesting or even create larger portfolios. Afterwards, I just need to create the R study object with the asset list as the first parameter. Then how I want to load the data, in which case uh, we will want to form it now. And finally, the sample format, okay? In this first example, I will create the portfolio dictionary with all the data on the fly, passing the form argument to the research study constructor. In this case, I will with the raw tick data without any transformation. The final data frame will have the bids and ask prices together with their specific sizes. As the request will, will take a lot of time, I will just show to you how it will start getting the data and it will cut off uh, to get onto the following example. Okay, so we can go here to Visual Studio Code and I hit the play button. We see, we'll see now how we start to request the, the data to the FTP server and I will just pass it now. This last example will not get all the data at this moment from the FTP server. It will rather read the data from the files I have previously loaded. For that matter, I, was, I will just change the formal read parameter to, to make sure that it's uh, on read and also make sure that I put the correct end date in the date R string. You can see these string names in the data you have previously downloaded just as names. Let me show you how it looks like. Here you have different files as pickle and also as CSVs. And you can see the end date data string here, just displaying the year, the month, the day, and the hour. You can also see it in the data folder inside the repository, like uh, in my folder structure. So as you can see here, I will take the, the previously date string bit of the file name and just copy paste it into the date R string parameter of the research study class. Just to note one thing, to maintain the generalization properties of this workflow structure, if you are like me and want to have the data ordered and in different folders, you can do it without an issue. However, note that you will need to change the initial searching path on the asset class and specifically in the read bit and ask historical data method to point to the specific folder that holds the data. If I go to the asset class, uh, I will just uh, show you where it is changed, okay? Then I can just inspect the data by getting the portfolio dictionary, attribute and indexing it by the symbol to access the data frame. Finally, I will apply a simple calculation to generate the raw returns on each asset of the portfolio so that I can then save the generated data frame and use them again later. Let's run the script and show the results. Okay, so finally, as we mentioned, the data frames will be saved in the, we can not only inspect the WS30 uh, asset here in the portfolio, but at the same time, we have saved those data frames. So let me show you where they are. As you can see, the data frames are saved onto the data uh, underscore GF folder. This is it about the data retrieval. I wanted to make sure that you understand how the workflow is implemented so that you can start playing the road yourself with it. In the next video, I will start to analyze the data and talk about the crucial importance of this first data processing steps so that valuable representations are created to generate real and robust alpha.